If you want to make some really stunning boxes for your flowers, then this is definitely the video for you. I put these together for a business that they already had some wooden flower boxes there, but they had deteriorated over time. It was time to replace those things. So I suggested uh, making them out of PVC. The good thing about PVC is it doesn't deteriorate and it's extremely easy to paint these things. I've watched some other videos and none of them mention painting the boxes, but I really think that you should. I put a coat of white paint on these things just because when you look at the trim and you look at the board or when you buy it, they kind of have these different surfaces on them. One's a little bit shinier than the other. So I wanted them to look really nice and uniform so that when we put it in, there's just no doubt that these were top quality boxes. The downside to PVC is that it's extremely expensive. Like I think for the, both of these boxes at this time, it costs like around $250. One is 58 inches long and the other was 64 inches long. Uh, so if that makes sense to you, I, I had very little waste at the end. So they can be kind of expensive, but if you think about the investment that you're making, they're supposed to last a really long time. So let's get into this video and I'll show you exactly how I made them. So if you can't tell already, I've got a very small shed and space is very limited for me. So everything just kind of gets piled up on the top shelf. If you're like me, you feel my pain. What I always have to do is I always double check all of my measurements, even right before looking at this. Like I went back to the shop, did some more measurements. I, I'm one of those guys where I don't know what happens, but I, I always mess up a measurement. And I bought just enough material for this, for this job. Uh, I was really hoping that there wouldn't be any mistakes. And see, right here is the first mistake. I forget to plug in the um, the compound saw. And I already made a mistake with my very first cut. I made an inside cut instead of an outside cut. So just so that I can explain my thought behind this for, you know, just for people that are kind of learning to do this trade and woodworking and things like that. I needed the first box to be 64 inches from the outside to the outside, which means that I don't know what the inside of my box technically needs to be. So if I go ahead and I cut this piece first, right, I can get the 64 on the outside and then I would just easily measure up the inside length to make the actual box. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. And you'll see what I mean. And I also just want to point out, if you've got a small shop, this PVC bends really easily without breaking. So I didn't need to pull out the compound saw and push it to the other side of the room while I tried to make these cuts. The thing just bends right around the corner. I thought that was fun. So I make this cut off camera, but I made it a little bit big on purpose so that I could just creep up on that measurement. With a lot of my cuts, I like to cut past my mark and then I just move them in so that I can get right up to that mark. It's one way that I can really just make sure that when that blade comes down and makes that cut that I'm not undercutting, overcutting. I, I've just made that mistake so many times. I know Start on the outside, make your cut, move your way in. Just right, right up to that line. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you look at this, because of that mitered cut at that 45 degree, you're going to have a larger measurement from the outside than you would the inside of that 45 degree, which means the box itself needs to fit within the inside of that 45 degree cut. Um, because 
the boxes are sitting on brick, right? And I wanted that outside trim to be right up against the edge of the brick. If I would have measured this with the actual box itself, then this trim would be overhanging that brick, and I did not I did not think that that would look nice. This is pretty much why I always keep cardboard and I never throw it out. I didn't want a lot of glue and primer to get all over my table. Now, I've watched a few videos on YouTube about how to make some of these PVC boxes and everybody always talks about gluing them and I definitely believe that you should glue them but nobody ever talked about priming it and I've done a lot of plumbing work using PVC pipes and stuff like that and you have to prime them so I'm not exactly sure why people don't do this in other videos but you'll see that I, I prime everything right before I glue it up and this is this is what takes the most time in this entire build when I'm woodworking uh, you know if I put some glue down or, or whatever it is it, it tends to be a pretty quick process but this two-step process of gluing everything before you put it together uh, this is this is what really eats up your time however I think it's kind of nice that you glue these it, most people don't realize that PVC when you glue it together and you do it right it's a chemical bond it it like it welds together the the PVC itself so it's a really really tight bond and I think that's probably why these boxes are so sturdy. You're going to see me use some brad nails throughout this. And the reason why I use them is just to keep them together uh, temporarily for the glue to dry. I'm so used to woodworking that I probably overdid it with the brad nails uh, in a few areas in the box. But... Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely see me overdoing it. And sometimes the video may not capture me putting primer on it, but trust me, I definitely put primer on these before I glue them up. So I purposely cut this to be a little big because I like to go back to the saw and shave it off bit by bit until it perfectly fits in there into the spot that I need it to go. That way when I'm done with it I can go ahead and cut the other board to length the same exact length as this um, just so that you know it's it, you want the whole thing to be square you don't want one board bigger than the other it'll just turn out really ugly.
Dang it. So no shocker there, I measured the wrong side, so I had to flip the board over and put the right angle on it. The miter on my saw only moves in one direction, so I can only cut it at one 45 degree angle. I can't flip it the other way. So the other neat thing about this PVC board is that one side has a wood grain pattern to it. So say you want to use these to put up on your house to make it look like shutters or window sills or something like that. You could use that one side and the other side is smooth. I went for the smooth side because I think it looks a lot nicer on these boxes. And at times when you're gluing them up, the smooth side is, is going to make a better bond than the wood grain side anyways. I had the trim that I was going to put on the outside of the flower boxes and so I just thought it'd be better to put it up against a smooth side not to mention that the trim itself that I had to get for this it doesn't have any wood grain to it whatsoever and I thought it looked funky if the boards itself had the wood grain but the trim themselves didn't so that's why I just went with smooth all the way around So now that I have all four sides, I'm going to prime all of the miter joints and glue them all together. There's no need for any types of clamp or clamping system. I, I have a really cool ratcheting clamp system that uh, are, are really good for boxes and mitered edges, but you don't need that with this, which is why, I mean, I really like just how easy these are to put together. A couple brad nails holding together while they uh, finish curing, and that's all you need. So for this next part, I'm just going to change up the speed to go a little bit faster here.
So what I'm doing here is I grabbed a scrap piece and I cut it to try to fit in between the box because um, I can use that scrap piece to go to the table saw and to set my depth, right, or my distance from there. I cut it just shy, so on the table I just set the fence a little bit bigger and when I cut it, I got lucky and it fit right in. So you're about to watch me put way too many brad nails into this thing and that's where my old woodworking side wants to take over and make sure that it's secure. Even when I glue it, I put a ton of brad nails in there. And you'll see that I'm actually not too worried, uh, even in woodworking I do this, I'm not too worried about how many holes I put into something like the bottom because it's about to be covered by that trim piece, right? So I don't know, kind of 50-50, it's probably not a big deal that I put all those brad nails in there. Um, or because that glue is really strong and it's going to hold it and bind it together really, really well. Uh, but like I said, sometimes I just kind of overdo things a little bit.
Okay, so right there, what I just did was put a pencil mark on the trim piece in the angle that I need it cut so that I don't make the mistake of when I go up to my saw that I don't cut it in the wrong direction, the wrong 45 degree. It's just something that I've always done. Helps me to not make more mistakes, you know. And so this is the final piece. This is just a simple one by two that I put on top so that it just all looks pretty clean and uh, hides, you know, the fact that the trim is up against the board here. And this is where I make a mistake. I was thinking that my clamp could hold the two pieces of trim together flush so that when I nailed it, um, you know, I, I would get a better nail for the glue up. But what happened was the glue actually pulled the dirt off of the clamp and left a big black mark on there. So what I decided to do is I tried using the primer because the primer is um, it's a type of chemical that it's, it's a really harsh chemical and I just... I went back with the primer over top of that glue and it just cleaned it right up for me. So I got pretty lucky that it was an easy cleanup, but I should not have used this, this clamp.
And this was my attempt to fill in the holes. The caulk that I used... When it dried, it actually shrunk in, and so I went back over with a different product and tried to fill it in. The the other product, the it's it's like a wood putty, like a, a synthetic wood putty. That actually did a, a much better job. And <laughs> I when I got the wood putty, I wasn't paying attention, and I got the kind that dries to a natural color. But because we're painting this, it ended up working out okay, and, and you weren't able to see it. Here's a picture of the wood filler that actually works pretty well. If you take a look in the middle of the box, you'll see that I added a piece in there that I didn't get on camera. And the boxes were already pretty sturdy, but I just wanted to ensure that they were going to last a really long time. That the dirt inside and, I don't know, maybe people touching it or whatever, doesn't cause it to bow out in any way. So I just put those in there and put some wood filler over the brand nails. So on the second box in the back, I went ahead and I joined them together like this instead of the mitered edge. I'm not exactly sure if this adds more strength, but I thought I would just give it a try and see how it turns out. It still looks pretty nice. People aren't going to be able to tell that the back isn't mitered, but if you don't have the greatest miter saw, then maybe this is an alternative for something in the back that after you take a lot of time mitering the front to make it look nice, in the back it could go a lot faster and a lot easier if you don't miter it. And here at the end, I just have some before pictures and after pictures of the product. I think the box has turned out really nice. And I've got a few ideas for some different types of boxes in the future that I would like to try. But again, thank you so much for sticking through the video. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for me on how to make these better or look different, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Any question that you have, I watch the comments and I will answer them. So you have a blessed day. Take care.